First of all, um, we hear over the weekend, certainly if you believe the leaked reports to certain newspapers, that the government is not going to go ahead with plans to reform the Gender Recognition Act. Um, This means that people will not be allowed to self-declare their legal gender. Last week, you won't have escaped the fact that the author, J.K. Rowling, returned to a debate that many do call toxic. Um, J.K. Rowling said she herself was a survivor of domestic violence and declared that biological sex matters. I want trans women to be safe, she said. At the same time, I do not want to make natal girls and women less safe. Now, I should say that story is still being covered by many of the newspapers. If you look at the Daily Mail today, there is a headline, Now It's JK and the Book Publishers Staff Revolt. Uh, Some people at Hachette who publish her books are threatening to down tools, we're told, in a row over her views on gender. Uh, We also hear today that trans activists and non-binary people have written a public letter in support of JK Rowling after the Sun newspaper published a front page interview with her former husband so support for her there they continue to disagree with what she said about trans people but nevertheless they support her as a survivor of domestic abuse also in the papers today the fact that um, this is in the sun in fact her books are filling the top six positions in amazon's fiction chart so in spite of all this uh, people love her books and will continue to buy them it would seem Let's talk to Helen Belcher, co-founder of Trans Media Watch. She's chair of the National LGBT Charity Consortium and she has stood for the Liberal Democrats in various elections. We'll also have a word later with Joan Smith, chair of the Mayor of London's Violence Against Women and Girls Board. Now, how this is going to work is that I will talk to Helen and then I will talk to Joan. I hope you'll listen to everything that's said to both interviewees this morning and then you can pitch in too on email via our website and on social media at BBC Woman's Hour. So welcome first of all to Helen Belcher. Good morning to you Helen. Morning Jane. Now tell me why abandoning the Gender Recognition Act, why abandoning reform of the GRA you think is the bad, a bad thing to do, the wrong thing to do? Well, it's not about abandoning the Gender Recognition Act. The Gender Recognition Act was something that was given to us. The issue is the impact of what the government's proposals for protect it views as protecting single sex spaces is. If you look at the, I mean, you've talked about the, the reports in various newspapers, uh, they're talking about uh, adding protections in to prevent people with male anatomy going into Wimble, women's single sex spaces, going to lose, going to changing rooms and so on. That's the issue because how do you police it? My reaction when I read that piece, we've had years of this, was to sit on my uh, loo in the bathroom in floods of tears for five minutes googling how to seek asylum in Ireland. Okay. My but... wife, my wife, when she found out about it, she asked how it was going to be policed. Effectively, it's genital licences. Right. I she think, was can, can so I... appalled, and she wrote to eighty of her friends within, and within three hours, about half of them had written to their MPs about it. All right. It. I, I absolutely understand how passionately you feel about this, and there are many people listening who are as passionate as you. Some of them on your side of the debate, others uh, will profoundly disagree, of course. But I feel we've got too detailed too soon here. So let's just go back a little bit, if you don't mind, because we've got time this morning and it's so important that we explore this properly and fairly. Um, What we're talking about are the leaks to certain newspapers that the government has this government, Boris Johnson's government, is going to rail back on the reform of the Gender Recognition Act, which will mean that people will not be able to self-declare their gender. Why do you believe that is the wrong move? It's what it enables in terms of the uh, toxicity around the whole debate. And actually, the rollback of the Gender Recognition Act, as I say, is not the main thing. It wasn't the main thing we wanted. The main thing we want is to be allowed to live our lives in peace and having genital inspections or being prevented from using women's single sex spaces to live our lives, just do what every other woman does in there, uh, is, you know, it's such an assault 
on our basic rights. There was talk earlier uh, in other places about a urinary leash placed on women because public toilets weren't open. That would be applied to trans women. You look at domestic violence. Trans people are subject to enormous amounts of domestic violence. If those centres are closed to us, where are we supposed to go? It's not about legal gender. It's about how we're supposed to live our lives. Do you acknowledge that some women and girls are very concerned about this? Yes. And do you I, think un- I, think, I think it's wrong because I think the whole narrative has been built uh, peddling on fears and building on those fears. You, you referenced J- J.K. Rowling. Mm. I wrote to J.K. Rowling uh, the other day and I sympathised. I, you know, I said it was really sad that she had been um, abused. And I can, you know, I was, I actually did sign the letter uh, condemning the son for putting her abuser on the front page. My name wasn't included. But what you've got is a pile on of fear upon fear. And you end up with all sorts of really, really weird positions. And where it ends up is what we've been saying for years is that this whole debate starts to put women in danger. That's the problem. The narrative builds. You can identify trans women somehow. They may have a penis. They're in there for sexual gratification. You could be the object of their sexual violence. But that's all predicated on the idea that trans women are deceptive men. Right. And if you build, if you change that understanding, suddenly you end up with a completely but, but different position. At the heart of all this, and I, I, I don't doubt very much of what you said, and many people listening will absolutely agree with me on that, that they, they feel the suffering that you and many others have been through and pile on is probably the right term for some of the wretched stuff that goes around when we talk about these issues. At the heart of what J.K. Rowling said last week was that her biological sex, the reality of it, had made her vulnerable for, to a very particular form of violence. That's undeniable, isn't it? But I'm also subject to the same particular forms of violence in what sense Tell I'm, me more. I'm I am equally likely to be raped okay that that's where it boils down to I you, you mentioned that I stood in general elections yeah um, no prizes for second place is a shame <laughs> in the last election I had a prominent anti-reformer stand up in front of about a hundred people and accuse me of being found guilty of a criminal offense She said that a court had found me to be a liar. Now, I've never been in a court on any charge like that, let alone being found guilty. Mm. But what she then did was she videoed that and and that video was then distributed on a number of Facebook pages around the constituency. Somebody else posted a video of me campaigning onto a local Facebook page. And the first comment from a different woman was, but he's a man. And lower down, the same post, they accused me of being deceptive. So apparently I should declare that I'm trans whenever I speak at anything. That is a low-level form of abuse. Every time I appear on media, there is abuse in my social media feed. I block most of it, right, but, I, you know, I have, it's been horrific for No years. one. But I, I, mean, I should say, that, of course, that every single day uh, some men are a troll woman's hour. They make a point of doing it every single day. So uh, there is no doubt that vitriol is out there and a lot of it, let's be honest, is directed at women. Um, Not all trans people agree with you, Helen. Um, Debbie Hayton is is a trans woman who's written about this. I've got a quote from uh, her here. Trans people have been taking and women have been yielding and that cannot go on indefinitely, Debbie writes. What do you say about that? Uh, not all women wanted the vote doesn't mean it's right. So where do we go from here? Um, those people who just hate the hatred, hate those pylons, hate the vitriol. How can we establish a proper and civilised conversation about where we go from here, Helen? We need to re-establish trust. And I think part of the problem is we, we were saying the Gender Recognition Act reform is nothing to do with these single sex spaces. And if you read the Sunday Times piece, for example, it makes it very clear that in order to put the protections in, they would need to change the laws. The very same laws that we said would need to be changed to protect those spaces in the way that they wanted. So, and the other side has been twisting it around and manipulating things and saying, oh no, the Gender Recognition Act would allow 
our self-declaration. Self-declaration already exists for the terms of the Equality Act. And what this government is now thinking about doing is weakening the Equality Act, making the Equality Act exclude trans women from certain things. That is not equality. We don't have a Secretary of State for Equalities anymore. We, have, we seem to have a Secretary of State for Inequalities. Are you referring there to, to Liz Truss? Yes. Yeah. Um, OK, I've really enjoyed talking to you, Helen. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. We appreciate okay. it. Um, let's bring in Joan Smith. Um, Joan, good morning to you. Good morning. Can I just say I'm speaking in a personal capacity and not on behalf of um, the, the Mayor's Committee? Right. No, let's make that very clear. OK, yeah. thank you. And we really appreciate you coming on as well. We are going to have a proper civilised conversation here and people can yeah. take part at BBC Women's Hour on Twitter or you can email the programme via our website. Um, let, let's talk about the reality of, of Helen's experience. Some of it, some of the stuff directed at trans women is absolutely vile, isn't it? That is undeniable. Yes, but that's a very typically emotional take on how to have a conversation about this. So if we step back for a moment and look at what's actually happened, there are two issues here. One is the, um, the proposed reform to the, the gender, um, uh, set the, the, the GRA, the Gender yeah. Recognition Act of 2004. And I think what's happened here is that people have finally realised that trans people, some trans people, not all, were making an unreasonable demand. So they were asking for total deregulation of the process of legal identification, legal recognition of people changing sex. So the state regulates all kinds of things. I can't just buy a car, go out and drive on the road without, without uh, taking a test. IVF is regulated, so is the adoption process. There are good reasons for all of that. And there is a regulatory system that covers gender recognition certificates. And what the, what the at the moment, you have to um, show that you've lived in your new sex for two years, intend to go on doing so, and you have to get a, a diagnosis of gender dysphoria from two doctors. Now, that seems to me perfectly reasonable. It allows people to get an, a new birth certificate. Um, that process won't change. It still exists. What we were worried about was the idea that women, a man, it's usually a man that we're talking about in these right. circumstances, because there's no great, there's no great clamour for men to be able to, to, for trans men to be able to use men's toilets. That we, what we were, were talking about was the fact that it would allow a man to wake up one morning to say, I am a woman, and apply for a new birth certificate, which would say that he was born female and erase his past. And that actually attacks the entire category of woman. It becomes just a feeling in someone's head. There, there are some um, people who feel that, I mean, I, Helen said it herself, that high emotion on both sides of this, we know. But is there not too much emphasis on toilets? The notion that every woman entering a public toilet, potentially there could be somebody with a penis waiting to attack them. I mean, I've used public toilets for 55 years. I've, how, honestly, how often does that happen? It's not, it's not just about toilets, it's about, it's about a whole series of women-only spaces. And the other part of what, what the government seems to be intending to do, and Liz Truss has actually said this, is that she wants to strengthen the guidance that goes along with the Equality Act 2010, because that act does allow situations where some people might feel vulnerable to, to have single-sex spaces. And that includes places like refuges, hospital wards, as well as, as well as toilets. But what's happened in the last couple, last three or four years is that there's been such a torrent of emotion on, on the side generated by trans activists that, that people are now afraid to come out and say they want those spaces. And some brands, some high street brands, some councils have actually been frightened into not, in, in, not applying the, the, those exemptions. So I think that, that it that is very welcome. But I think there's a larger point here which needs to be said, which is that I have been studying, reporting and writing about violence against women for decades, going all the way back to, you know, the, the, the Yorkshire Ripper case. Violence against women uh, is, is committed by men. Violence against trans women is committed by, by, by men. There's been a really terrible move here to suggest that somehow feminists, because we disagree with some trans activists, not all trans people, are somehow responsible for, for, for the violence against them. And that right. was thrown at J.K. Rowling last week, and that's not acceptable. 
I think it must be quite unusual for you to be on the same side, potentially, as a Boris Johnson Conservative government. Um, are you a little bit concerned that this, the conversation we've had this morning, is in some ways we, we've fallen into exactly what the government wanted us to do? We're having this debate. It's a distraction from everything else, some might say, that is going badly wrong for the government right now. Absolutely, and I'm certainly not a fan of this government. However, what I would say is that the, the reason that we are welcoming something which is going to be done by a government that a lot of us profoundly disagree with is that we've had so little support from the other parties. What happened during the Labour leadership um, election was really dismaying and frightening. The Lib Dems have been really bad on this too. And, you know, I what don't do you like mean by really bad on this? So, so um, during the leadership um, um, uh, election in, in the Labour Party, um, uh, there, there was a, an obscure trans rights organisation put out a 10-point pledge and asked all the candidates to sign it. And one of those, um, <coughs> excuse me, one of those um, pledges was about expelling women who, from the party who don't believe that trans women are women. And that is actually an opinion. And in a civilised society, we would be able to, to, to talk about that. It's not saying that they should be discriminated against. And in fact, I would argue, and a lot of trans women argue too, that we need third spaces where, those, where, the, where trans women feel safe. And, and, and we support the fact that they have all these protections in law. Um, a transphobia, a, a, a tr attacks on trans people because they're trans, is actually a hate crime in this yeah. country. Misogyny is not. No. I mean, no one is suggesting that anybody should attack anybody. I mean, we all, we both, uh, everybody agrees w with that. Um, but Helen's point that she simply feels so wretched about all this, or she has been made to feel so wretched, that she and her wife are thinking of leaving the country. But this can't, that, that's not where we want to be, is it? No, but I, I can tell you something else, which is that a huge number of women, of people in this country, have been really worried and upset and frightened by this debate. I, I myself think twice about coming on Women's Hour to talk about it because I know the kind of abuse and threats that feminists have, have had. And um, it's, it's actually one of those rare occasions where I think to myself, can I put up with the kind of reaction that's going to be? I don't think I've ever known a moment when I've seen such rank misogyny directed against women who actually believe and support tran trans people. And, and this, I suppose, gets to the heart of, of, for me, I suspect many of our listeners are very interested in this without, it frankly probably wouldn't touch their daily lives very often. And at the moment, most people are up against it on so many levels. I mean, if you heard a tenth of the 10 o'clock news this morning, you'll know just how many challenges face most mm. people right now. What are people supposed to think about how to approach all this in their daily lives? I think a lot of people will be bewildered by it because what Helen and I have been talking about is really quite a technical change to an act that, of Parliament from, 19, from 2004 that a lot of people won't even know about exactly. or, or yes. understand. Yeah. And yes, exactly. But the point is that, that when you see, when I see women like J.K. Rowling, like my, my really good friend Julie Bindle, being attacked um, and, and smeared for years all over the place because they simply taking issue with an opinion, right. then I think we have, to, we have so, to stand up and speak. I suppose what I'm asking you is how do we behave responsibly here? Because we want to keep these conversations going. We don't want trans women to feel vulnerable or wretched or feel like leaving the country. Equally, a lot of people listening to this programme in particular will feel that women and girls have had to fight very hard for their spaces out there, for their safety. Well, what we need is a respectful debate. And it's really interesting that I was willing to have a debate with Helen this morning. She was not willing to debate with me. Well, she didn't feel, I mean, I, I, Helen is now not here to defend herself. But she didn't feel able, I guess, Joan, is the truth. And well, for the same reason, you, she, she feels vulnerable in the same way that you do. And by the way, it's awful that you would have to have doubts about appearing on this programme to discuss this issue. That's not right either. It's not. But, the, but I think what's happened over the last few years is that a small group of trans activists who are actually quite extreme in their views have seized this conversation and they've, they've filled it with such a, a huge amount of emotion that it's become a kind of test of, of whether you have the right views or not. And 
this word transphobe and this awful abbreviation TERF is, is thrown out. Yeah. It's a silencing, it's a silencing me mechanism. I chaired the Pen Writers and Prison Committee for years. I, I see the, the weapons that are used to stop people speaking about, about contentious subjects. And that's what's happened in this country. And all, you know, what's really important is the trans women and trans men don't, haven't lost any rights that they had last week. They're still protected in law. They can't be discriminated against at work. They have, as I said, they're protected by hate crime legislation. Right. They haven't lost anything. All we're doing is saying, and we've been saying to the government for a long time, hold off on this, on this change in the Gender Recognition Act. And, and that does not actually impact on a huge number of people's lives. And it certainly doesn't open trans women to, to violence. Well, certainly well, and nobody would want that. Um, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on, Joan. Um, thank you very much indeed. That is Joan Smith uh, speaking, as she made clear at the start, that in an entirely personal capacity, uh, many people will recognise Joan as being um, a feminist campaigner of long standing. We're grateful to her and to Helen Belcher for appearing on the programme today.